Hey everyone, it's Tony with Hidden Light Photography. And as beginners, we can sometimes get a little bit too caught up in some myths that are out there about astrophotography and how they cause things to play out. And sometimes that can overwhelm us and worse yet, even prevent us from trying at all. And today I wanna to cover five of those common myths and what they really mean. And if you find this video useful, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. There's plenty of content where this came from. Now let's jump in and talk about five common myths and what they really mean. Myth number one, you need a big, expensive telescope to get good results. Let me be really clear about something. You do not need a massive or expensive telescope to capture jaw-dropping images. Most of you probably recognize this photo of Andromeda. It's the same one from my YouTube intros and headers on my website. I captured it with a Celestron Omni XLT150, a simple six inch Newtonian designed for visual observing. It cost me just a few hundred bucks. Here's the real secret. It's not about having the biggest scope. It's about having the right foundation. Start with optics that are well made. I've trusted Cinta manufactured optics for years because they deliver solid performance without breaking the bank. Then, Pair those optics with a good tracking mount. That's the real MVP. If your mount can't track well, it doesn't matter how fancy your telescope is, you'll be stuck with blurry stars and limited exposures. Myth number two, more magnification means better astrophotography. This one confuses a lot of people who are getting started, and honestly, it makes total sense. We're used to thinking like visual observers, the more zoom, the better the view. So naturally, people assume if I can zoom in closer, I'll get amazing close-ups of galaxies and nebula. But in astrophotography, magnification can actually hurt you. When you over-magnify, your field of view shrinks, guiding errors become painfully obvious, stars bloat, and framing becomes a nightmare. You end up being limited to tiny targets, and missing out on some of the most breathtaking wide view scenes the sky has to offer. Myth number three, you can fix anything in post-processing. This one gets a lot of people tripped up. They'll say, it's okay if my data isn't great, I'll just fix it in Photoshop or PixInsight. But the reality is, you can't fix what was never there to begin with. You can stretch, sharpen, denoise, but if your data wasn't there, no amount of processing is going to pull out clean detail. It's like trying to sharpen a photo that was out of focus. You can make it look different, but not better. And trying to force it makes the image look unnatural and plasticky rather than that jaw dropping effect I'm sure you're aiming for. This is why good acquisition matters more than clever processing. Take your time, nail focus, get good guiding, dither, and build up your integration time. Good data isn't about perfection, it's about giving your future self something worth working with. Then processing becomes the fun part, not a rescue mission. Myth number four, light pollution makes astrophotography impossible. I image from Bortle 6 suburbs, and I've captured faint galaxies, sprawling nebula. I've even captured good luminance data from Bortle 9. Light pollution is annoying, but it's not a wall. It just changes how you play the game. Here's how to fight back. Avoid shooting with the moon. It adds harsh gradients and overwhelms faint detail, especially in already light polluted skies. Aim for targets with higher altitudes. The higher your target, the less atmosphere and light pollution you're shooting through. Fun fact. Looking at the horizon means you're peering through twice the atmosphere as zenith. Avoid the horizon haze. Keep your targets high to keep your gradients low. Light pollution limits you, but it doesn't stop you. Every pixel of signal you collect is still real. With filters, smart framing, and careful stacking, you can pull beauty from the noise. You don't need to wait for dark sights. Capture what light you do have and let calibration and stacking do the rest. Myth number five, you have to capture everything in one night. 
This one stresses out a lot of people. I've got only one night. I have to finish the whole thing or I failed. But here's the truth. Some of my favorite images were built over many nights. Sometimes it takes weeks, sometimes even multiple seasons before I finish a project. What matters most is integration time, not whether it all happens in one perfect window. If clouds roll in, put your gear away. Bust out your phone to take photos of the clouds passing by the moon. These make spectacular shots. If the moon crashes your session, just say, hello beautiful, and swing your scope to the moon and grab some lunar shots. Who knows, maybe it'll be your best moon photo yet. It's really no big deal. The universe is just showing you more of its beauty. You didn't fail, you just paused. Come back tomorrow or next week. The light you're capturing took thousands, millions, or in some cases, billions of years to reach you. You are allowed to take weeks or months or even years to collect it. You don't have to be perfect. You just have to be persistent because astrophotography isn't one night photography. It's accumulated light over time. Time is on your side. Let it work for you. So I hope you found this video useful, and if you did and want to help support the channel, check out that join button and consider joining a Hidden Light Photography membership. There's lots of perks in it for you, and your support helps me bring you more content. Another way you can help support the channel is checking out my High Point Scientific Affiliate link if you're in the market for some new gear. It doesn't cost you anything extra, and the support helps me keep the channel growing. Also, do me a favor. That channel icon that popped up? Hit that channel icon and subscribe. I don't want you to miss out on any useful information. Drop a comment in the comment section. Did you find this video useful? What are your thoughts on these myths? And then, check out that next video. Until the next time, clear skies.